what's going on guys welcome back to sepak training my name is kobe and this is the 11th sepak tutorial and in this lesson we will learn how to do with outliers in data in the previous lesson we learned that bimodal distribution and outliers are the two potential factors or properties that can ultimately affect variogram and block model estimations the only means of identifying the existence of bimodalism and outliers is by creating a histogram, which we did in the previous lesson. Now, in this tutorial, we shift the attention to using the histogram that we created to identify if we have bimodal distribution or outliers related to the population data. I saved a copy of the histogram that we created as an image file just for future reference. So you can see it has now come in handy. This is a copy of it. I'll click and drag it into graphics and by visual inspection, we will know if we have bimodal distribution or outliers associated with the data. I stated in the previous lesson that as part of using a histogram to determine bimodal distribution, any histogram which displays two bars at their peaks that are not adjacent to one another can be said to have bimodal distribution. But looking at this image, we have only one bar at its peak. So we can confidently say that there is absence of bimodal distribution. If we had bimodal distribution in our data, we would have to go back to our data, sort it out into different domains and analyze them separately. But fortunately for us, we do not have bimodal distribution and we are very happy with that. Now the attention will be shifted to outliers. I also stated in the previous lesson that outliers in statistics refer to data values that are quite distant from the majority of the data set. Okay, so looking at this image, we can see that this bar here is an outlier. This same image, I edited it identifying this bar as an outlier. Okay, and this is it. So we can see clearly that that bar, this bar here is an outlier. It is relatively distant from the rest of the data set. Okay, again, if we take a look at the histogram and the cumulative frequency curve that we created, it is obvious that this bar is an outlier as it is distant from the rest of the bars here. With respect to the cumulative frequency curve, you can see all these points are close, okay, except for this point which is relatively distant from the points here so we can see that this point is an outlier so now that we know we have outlier associated with our data set we will have to go um, and deal with it we have to find ways and means of dealing with it the process of dealing with this outlier is called top cutting okay or applying a cutoff that is you are cutting off the outlier you are top cutting it all right there are so many methods which can be used to determine a top cut value and this include histogram confidence interval percentile experience you don't have to worry about all these methods of determining a top cut value to apply in order to eliminate your outlier the most commonly used one in setback is the histogram okay so in using the histogram to determine the top cut value you focus on the cumulative frequency curve okay the point at which the cumulative frequency curve flattens off can be taken as the top cut value okay so looking at this cumulative frequency curve the point at which the cumulative frequency curve flattens off can be used as the top cut value so from this um statistics histogram that you are seeing here it is sensible to say or to choose 3.75 as my top cut value because this is the point at which the cumulative frequency curve flattens off. Someone could choose a value between 3.5 and 3.75, but this is my interpretation. I'm going by choosing 3.75, okay? That is the end of this bar. All right, so now that we have chosen a top cut value of 3.75, I will use this 3.75 and apply it to eliminate the outlier we have in a data set. I have demonstrated a similar process in lesson 9 where you kind of use the, um, the string mask tool 
to apply a cutoff. Okay, so we, this is our top third value of 3.75. We will use it and apply it by selecting 3.75 to as the top cut value. We are trying to eliminate this point we have here. All right, so that is all that this tutorial is about. Okay. So I'll close the window and now we will go ahead and apply a cutoff to our data or a top cut value to our data. Okay, so this is the composite file that we are going to concentrate on. I just want to save this file with a different name. Okay, it will be the same file but just difference in names. So I will click save and now I will give it a different name, composite inside 2 and I will save it. So it will go into my red directory. So I will have this same similar file, but difference in names. Okay, it's the same thing. All right, I just don't want to alter the first one. So I have opened it and saved it with a different name, composite inside two. Okay, now time for us to apply the top cut value of 3.75. I'll go over to file tools, string mass, and now I'll go into my work directory and select composite inside two. Okay, and I'll give it a name because I'm applying, I'm doing top cutting. I'll give it a name composite underscore top cut. Okay, the operation is to be done on all the strings of the composite inside too. So no need to fill this field. Okay, no constraint. Then the field that I want to, the field that I want to apply is D1, that is the first description field, okay? The first description field of the composite contained gold values. And that is those values that I want to apply the top cut value of 3.75. So you will select the first description field, D1, description field one, which contains your gold values. All right, and this is the expression that I will enter in order to apply the top cut of 3.75. If D1 is greater than or equal to 3.75, then maintain that same value 3.75, else keep the first description field. I go over the code. If the first description field is greater than or equal to 3.75, then assign a value of 3.75 to that value, else keep description field 1. All right, so composite top cut will be created in my work directory. Don't forget the two here will be attached to this. So it will be composite top cut two, and that will be saved in my work directory. We will go and take a look at that, okay? So I'll click apply. So it will load the string data, and now it says composite top cut two string has been created, okay? So I'll go into my work directory. This is it, composite top cut two. You see it's the same file. Except that when I right click and select edit to view the content, some values that were greater than 3.75, that is the top cut value, will have 3.75 applied to it. Otherwise, it will keep the same good values. Okay, so any good value that is greater than 3.75 will have 3.75 there. All right, like I said, by applying a top cut value, of 3.75 you have eliminated the outlier so in order to validate that we have eliminated the outlier let's take a look at the statistics we created for the first data set okay our data set when we had outliers associated with it so this is the statistics report we created when we had outliers that was in the previous lesson associated with our data set the minimum and maximum values are the minimum and maximum gold values we have in our data set respectively. So this is the minimum gold value and this is the maximum gold value. So this is the maximum value of the statistics report. Okay, and we have now applied a top card value of 3.75, meaning 3.75 has now become our maximum value. Okay, so we will, in order to validate that we have applied a, um, a top cut value of 3.75 we would have to create a statistics for the top cut the composite top cut that we have created 
to verify that and we will compare the two statistics report okay so now i will go to database come to analysis then i'll create basic statistics window okay then i'll load my string file and this time around it will be composite top cut because that is what we want to we want to create a statistics report on the first description field for display i will enter gold here let's keep the width of 0 0.25 apply okay as you can see from this histogram and cumulative frequency curve you can see that the points are now closely related to each other we do not have a point that is quite distant from the rest of the data so we can justify that our outlier has been dealt with now as you can see from the horizontal or the x-axis of the histogram 3.75 is our maximum value okay so we now don't have any outlier let's create a report for this and we will compare it to the statistics report we created when we had an outlier associated with the data set so i'll go to statistics report now i will enter here a name for the output file enter top cut underscore statistics report okay and i'll enter percentiles here in accordance to my preference 0 to 90 at intervals of 10 and 95 and 97 the end here is specified with um, semicolon 95 and 97 and 99 and 100 percentile i don't want to group data i'll click apply okay so this is the report for my statistics okay so as you can see now the maximum value is now 3.75 the minimum value remains the same okay so i'll minimize this window and we'll compare it with the previous one okay so this is it as you can see the statistics report for our data when we had outlier is the statistics report here and this is the top cut statistics report okay so if you compare the two you can see that the maximum value for this report is 5.06 but now we have 3.75 as the maximum value meaning we have eliminated that outlier in this data that is why we have our top cut value of 3.75 being our maximum value okay so we have validated our top cutting okay so we now know that we are confident that we have dealt with the outlier okay as revealed by this cumulative frequency curve and the histogram okay so now we are happy that our data is free of outliers i stated earlier on that outliers can cause noisy experimental variograms which will be difficult to model additionally they can cause unrealistic results in block model estimation and there is therefore the need to always analyze your data for outliers and remove them from whichever data you are dealing with okay so that will be all for this lesson and stay tuned for more separate tutorials and in the next lesson we will dive into variogram concepts i will explain everything that you do not understand i will explain it to the lowest step so that you understand everything without problems thank you for watching and feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe to my channel until we meet again it's kobe signing out for now bye